Hello everyone, welcome to High Caliber Haymaker. Today we're reviewing the Taurus GX4 XL Toro. The newly modified, a little bit longer frame, a little bit longer barrel, subcombat version of the standard GX4. So let's see if those little modifications that they made to this pistol make it just as reliable or even more. Thank you guys for just coming by and checking out my channel and my content. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button. We just recently hit one of our subscriber goals. So we'll be doing a giveaway of one of our custom AR stands. I'm also going to throw in one of our hats from our affiliate sponsor with that giveaway. So that announcement will be coming in a video very soon. So what you see behind me is the beginning of my own personal range. So some of the land's been cleared as you can see. Still got to level everything off so bear with me as we're still working through this uh, just to show you know, my full dedication to making the, making this content for you guys and continuing to do what I do. So please hit that subscribe button. That's just the easiest way to support me. And of course, uh, now more than ever, it's more important to support content creators uh, supporting the Second Amendment. So please do that. So I have taken some initial shots with this already to get it sighted in, uh, but I'm really excited to start shooting these steel targets for you guys. So we have our 11 round magazine loaded up. And before I take these shots I want to show you this as well so they do offer these extension plates for your magazines that it does come with uh, the 13 round is I'll show you that one in a minute but this does help especially give you that little bit more surface area for your pinky and it's definitely more comfortable but it does come with that so it's in the box uh, so right when you open it up you can throw that on there especially if you, I mean I have pretty standard size hands I would imagine uh, but especially if you have a little bit bigger hands they do offer that in there as well so good on them for that. So let's go ahead and take our 11 shots at these steel targets and see if we have any kind of uh, malfunctions or anything. All right, guys, so clearly no malfunctions. I'll go ahead and turn the camera too. The ones where you didn't hear a ping going off, that was the orange ones that sit there a little bit lower. Get you on some level ground here. As you can see, they're swinging nice and hard. So very excited to have these out here. So again, we're gonna go ahead and load up our 13 round magazine. I'll show you what that looks like as well. And uh, just continue to see how this thing runs. It's very flat shooting. It's easy to come right back on target. The red dot, you know, as well. I didn't lose it at all in those shots. Uh, so let's see if that continues. All right, guys, we've got our 13 round magazine loaded up here. And as you can see, like I said, it gives you that extra surface area down there at the bottom. So it's definitely a comfortable subcompact nine millimeter for sure. Um, and for those of you who are concerned about uh, the reviews I'm doing, so all of the firearms that you've seen on my channel have been purchased. Uh, so these are not sponsored firearms. Like I'm going out, you know, finding deals and reliable firearms to bring to you guys. So what you get here is truly what I'm experiencing. Um, if it's, like I told you in my intro video when I first started this channel, if it's not good, I'm gonna tell you. But I will tell you though, Taurus's quality and control is going up and staying up. I don't think I've run across anything lately where I'd question that, that statement within itself. So let's get back to it. I'm gonna actually gonna step over here. I'm gonna leave the camera over here at the target so you can see the, uh, the steel that we're ringing over here as well as the orange uh, targets down below. So those are high wild targets, AR-500 steel, so they should be able to handle anything that we throw at it today. So I'm gonna step over there and let's keep going. So once again, no problems there, slide lock back. Uh, I will tell you this too, it's actually really easy to press the slide. It releases very easily as well. So as far as functionality goes, it is easy to control, stays on target, flat shooting, the grip texture feels great. It sits perfectly in my hand. 
It's got these textured pads here on the side for just your muscle memory, uh, as well as putting your thumb on the other side. I mean, the, this is just an excellent pistol. Um, flat face trigger. Uh, this is a little bit upgraded trigger from the regular GX4. Um, and I have to say, it's, it's very smooth, very flat. Uh, I mean, you feel the wall as soon as, as soon as you pull it. So very crisp break on it as well. And of course we'll do a breakdown and look a little bit deeper into everything. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and load up five rounds into our 13 round magazine. And then we're going to go see what kind of grouping we get as far as accuracy goes. So give me one second. We'll get into that. All right, guys. So I've got you right up to the target here. I'm going to back up to 10 yards and let's see what kind of grouping we get. All right, guys, so not too bad. As you can see, fairly close together. Looks like I may have been pulling a little bit on my inhale, uh, but I need to make a little bit more adjustments to bring this up. But overall, very close group. As you can see, two of them are like right within each other, and these three are all within themselves as well. So again, accuracy, also not an issue for this pistol. So we're going to go ahead and fully load both magazines. We'll do... The 11 round magazine and then probably head back to the house we'll do the breakdown and then of course we'll come back for our final test uh, as you've seen in all my videos uh, we'll do a mag dump to see if it can handle that faster fire rate all right guys we've got our 11 rounds loaded up so let's go ahead and go through this magazine and continue to see if we have any problems which I do not think we will So even before we get into the breakdown and the final test, which I doubt will have any issues, I can definitely say that this is a reliable pistol that will definitely make its way into a holster and definitely be carried for self-defense. That being said, let's go back to the house, get into our breakdown, and then we'll come back for our final test, and that should do it. So before we do that, let's get into today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Caliber Coffee. And I, you, I, I thought the same thing, it just makes sense. High Caliber Haymaker and Caliber Coffee, those two things should just go together. So it's really cool because they actually rate their roast by caliber. So it's, you know, 22 is their light roast, nine millimeter is their standard. Uh, and then of course they have 44 mag and 300 blackout. 300 blackout is in my house right now. My wife's a big fan of that one. Um, but it's a small local company in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, they do get their grounds from Colombia in South America, and it's a 100% Arabica coffee. So it's a quality blend, and I mean, I'm not a big coffee guy, but this stuff is good, especially if you do cold coffee. This is really excellent. Veteran-owned and operated, so of course they're going to have my 100% support, and we're really glad to be affiliated with them. So make sure you click the link in the description down below and go check them out. Uh, they do have a lot of deals on there as well. And of course, they have a discount code for veterans and first responders. So before we get into the breakdown, I just wanted to pull everything out of the case that you get. Uh, just so you know those little things to look for. Also, just to kind of show you the little extra things that Taurus is doing right now. So it does come with this little keychain. This does act as your tool for your takedown. I thought that was pretty neat. You see these in a couple other firearms as well, but it's kind of cool how they integrated that in as well. But like I said in the video, I did add the extension to this magazine right here just to have that little bit more surface area for my pinky. Uh, it traditionally comes with this on it. It's easy to change out. Press out the bottom of your pin here. Slide that forward. Make, just be careful because your spring will jump out if you're not ready for it. And then you slide your new one on and it's literally that simple. It also comes with a high swell back strap. Uh, what it comes with on it is comfortable for me, but if you want to change it out, what you would do is remove your pin, slide that one down slide this one up, 
place your pin and then you have a little bit higher grip on the gun if that's something that you're interested in. So let's go ahead and get into the breakdown. What you need to do is drop your magazine and let's make sure our chamber is clear, which it is. And that also assists with your breakdown because it does need to be fully racked uh, before you can hit the takedown pin here on the side. So what you're gonna do is rotate that counterclockwise. What that's gonna do is you'll see the frame slides forward just a little bit, pull the trigger, and that'll separate your slide from your frame. And that's that simple. So now we have a dual recoil spring here. So you're gonna pull that, kinda press it pretty good. Removes right out, it is steel. Worked very well at the range today. I was very happy with that. Very low recoil on this for a subcompact. And then you can slide your barrel forward a little bit, remove that, and then you are field stripped. So as usual, <laughs> it's very dirty. So I'm going to clean this up and then we will get into some specs uh, before we put it back together. As usual, fairly easy to clean, nothing out of the ordinary. Make sure you focus on your feed ramp, wipe down your uh, recoil spring really well, and of course, make sure you clean the internal part of your slide here. So, before we start our reassembly, a couple things I wanted to focus on while we have it apart. Obviously, the dual recoil spring helps with uh, mitigating the recoil, but check out these slide rails. Uh, I mean, they are very long. Typically, you don't see one that's just like all the way to the back like this. Normally, it's to a certain point, and then there's a break, and then it starts again, kind of like what you're seeing right here. But these are quite long, especially I've never seen anything like that in a some compact pistol before. So I would imagine that also assists with the recoil. Uh, nothing too far or hard as uh, cleaning the slide out here. Just focus, especially down here on your extractor area. And of course, right where your striker fire pin comes out to fire that round. Just make sure those areas are definitely clean. So let's go ahead and start our reassembly. I'm going to drop in our barrel. And like I said a minute ago, make sure that you put a flat side of your recoil spring into the bottom of the barrel. You don't want anything canted or sticking out anywhere. Uh, so that should look like that there. Start at the rear of the slide and, well, in this... Uh, frame, I would say the middle of the rails here. Should be able to slide it all the way back, excuse me, and you should be locked in place. Just like that. So let's pull the trigger for a functions check. We are good to go. Go ahead and reload our magazine. And as always, we're going to get a weight on our firearm, don't tell my wife, took her scale from the kitchen per usual. So let's make sure we're reset. So the weight on the Taurus GX4 XL, 1.29 ounces. That's with an empty magazine, but also with an optic. Uh, like I've said before, you do have the options for not having that. And I do have a comparable firearm here today. This is my sister-in-law's G3C. Uh, she let me borrow this just for this video. So thank you to Amber James for letting us do that. So let's get a weight on that just for comparison. 1.4 ounces. And that is also empty as well. So just to compare the two. But while we have them both here, let's just go ahead and take a look at both of them as far as like the profile and things like that. So again, this is the XL version. So this is a little bit longer. It's an inch longer frame than the standard GX4. So that would be pretty much the same length. But if you notice the textures of the two grips, uh, this one is way more aggressive. Um, and also the frame itself is significantly thicker than the GX4. So it would be my professional recommendation. If you're not happy with the G2C or G3C, uh, this would definitely be a nice upgrade for you. Uh, some other things to notate, you can see that this does have these bevels on the frame for more comfort. But like I said, I like the textured pads they put right here just for your muscle memory. This does have a option for a light as well. If you wanna do an attachment, it does have one single rail there. And this does not, but with this being a subcompact, that would probably be in my rotation for concealed carry. Not too worried about that. Also, this has a more flat face trigger as you can see. So they've definitely done some upgrades 
Uh, this is like your standard takedown stuff. You pull this on both sides to release your frame. And this has the pin um, as far as disassembly. So just to compare the two so you can see them side by side just so you get an understanding. But again, I would highly recommend the GX4 uh, for a concealed carry over the G2 or G3C just because it's slimmer, lighter, uh, capacity is there, your trigger is upgraded, uh, you have the optic option. Hence Toro, where you see that with Taurus, that's the Taurus optic ready option. So let's get into the size of this one here. So your overall length is 6.43 inches, your overall height is 4.4, and your overall width is 1.8. So very slim, very small, compact uh, pistol. Again, with that additional uh, size of the slide here that they added on plus the barrel, it did for sure do an upgrade for this pistol as far as mitigating the recoil and keeping it on target and things like that. So kudos to Taurus for the upgrades that they've done to this XL. I think it's great. So now we're all finished up here. So let's get back to the range and do our final test. All right, guys, now that we're back at the range, as usual, we're going to do our mag dump to see if it can handle that faster fire rate as our final test, as usual. So let's see what this GX4XL can actually do. Hold on. Before we do our mag dump, like I stated in the AR-15 pistol brace ruling video that I made, Jonathan Savoy was our first winner of our AR-15 custom stand giveaway. So here he is. He received his box. Here he is with it open. I just keep forgetting to integrate the photos that he sent me into the video. Of course, uh, he sent this to me uh, with his permission to put in here. So congratulations. And like I announced earlier in this video, we hit another subscriber goal. So another one of you who is subscribed, of course, is going to receive an AR stand. And I'm also this time going to throw in a hat from our affiliate sponsor at Web Western. So be on the lookout for that. So now let's get to the final test. Well, I think that speaks for itself. As always, guys, thanks for checking out my content. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss our next review. We're doing the Smith & Wesson FPC carbine. That's going to be a fun one. Folds out real cool. As always, stay safe. Get out to the range and knock out some rounds. And I will see you next time.